2022. I'm your host, Warren Huang, and we also have another host, Srinidhi Vimpati, with us here today, and another member of our team, Vaid, who is operating um, the slides today. Next slide, please. We're proud to announce our partnership with the North South Foundation, which provides college scholarships for underprivileged students in India and provides educational opportunities for students of Indian backgrounds living in the United States. I'm sure that you've met all our contestants. Um, you know them by name from our past video. Um, here we have 11 of them. Fantastic contestants, all of them. They've made it very far um, already, but um, today we will figure out that only 10 of these wonderful contestants will make it on to the top 10 competition on Thursday. Now here's the challenge. The students will be required to the students will be required to um, answer a question which will have a country, region, or specific people group as the answer. They will find a dish from their own country, region, or people group, and they cannot use the dish mentioned in the question. They will research this, this dish thoroughly for 15 minutes and will be used, allowed to use any resources. They will have afterwards, they'll have three minutes to relate their dish to the country's history. Geog uh, to the country, geography, history, government, religion, geographical position, and um, anything else that they deem is necessary to their presentation. Here's the rubric. Their connection and representation representation of their topic will be worth five points. Their explanation of connection will be worth 12 points and their use of other geographic knowledge, either from both their extensive research or their already known knowledge will be worth a solid 13 points for a total of 30 points for the presentation today. But contestants beware, there are also deductions. Getting the initial prompt wrong will mean a deduction of three points. Geographical inaccuracies in the explanation will be minus two points each, and using the dish in the question, which is not allowed, will be a deduction of two points. So contestants, how are you ready? How do you feel? Already. So it's showtime. On to question one. Here's the first slide. First person going is Dylan. Dylan, are you ready? Yeah. So here you are. Bol renversé is a fusion dish that mixes Asian ingredients with rice and can often be found in Chinese restaurants. It mixes Chinese cuisine with the cuisine from what island country where Rodrigan and Agalega Creole are spoken in the nation's outlying territories? Mauritius. Mauritius is correct. Great. You'll be, uh, you'll be researching a dish from the country of Mauritius. On to the next com competitor. Um, the next competitor is Anish. Anish, are you ready? Yes, I am. Already. Here's your question. Located in the heart of the Ciudad Vieja, or Old Town, the famous Mercado del Puerto market is known for its large supply of meat, demonstrating the carnivorous culture of the southernmost capital city in the Americas. This market is located in what nation where land for agriculture takes up more than 80% of the entire country? Argentina? I'm sorry, the correct answer was Uruguay. So you get that one incorrect, unfortunately. Next up, um, we'll be on to Srinidia. Um, you can ask this one. All right. Uh, so, Pranav Krishna, are you ready? 
Yeah. Okay. Here's your question. Chetanad chicken is a famous spicy dish originating from the Chetanad region. This region is mostly located in the Sivaganga district of what Indian state that borders Karaykal, one of the units of the Puducherry Union territory. Can you repeat the question? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, I'll repeat uh, the question. Sorry. Uh, Chedinad chicken is a famous spicy dish originating from the Chedinad region. This region is mostly located in the Sivaganga district of what Indian state that borders Karaykal, one of the units of the Puducherry Union territory. Andhra Pradesh. Uh, I'm sorry, the correct answer is Tamil Nadu. All right, that was a tough one. On to the next question. Tom, you're up. Srinadia, you're on deck. All right. Tom, so here is your question. Kabidela is a dish made of poultry and is typically found in the northern Minhor region. This region is located in what European country where Mirandese is a co-officially recognized language spoken mainly in the district of Bragansa? Bragansa. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Cabidella is a dish made of poultry and is typically found in the northern Minho region. This region is located in what European country where Mirandese is a co-officially recognized language spoken mainly in the district of Bragansa? If you if you want me to spell, I can spell that. Uh, can you spell Bragansa? Yeah, B B R A G A N C A. Portugal. And um, yeah, that's correct. Good job. All right. On to the next contestant. This one's for Malcolm. Malcolm, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go. Roma Zava is a type of stew made with meat and leafy greens. It is the national dish of what island country where French colonial history can be found in the architecture of the northern city of Ensiranana? Madagascar. Yep, Madagascar is correct. Um, yeah, great job. On to the next competitor, which is Matish. Shuni, you're on deck again. All right. So, Nitish, here's your question. Stufa al fennec or rabbit stew is a dish where rabbit is slow cooked alongside other ingredients in a broth made with red wine, tomato puree, and various herbs. It was introduced under the rule of Knight of the Knights of St. John, now a national dish in what European country home to the iconic Hal Safliani Hypogeum, a subterranean complex of halls and burial chambers from 4000 BC? Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Stufa tall fennec or rabbit stew is a dish where rabbit is slow cooked alongside other ingredients in a broth made with red wine, tomato puree, and various herbs. It was introduced under the rule of the Knights of St. John, now a national dish in what European country home to the iconic House Safliani Hypogeum, a subterranean complex of halls and burial chambers from 4000 BC? France. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Malta. Another tough one there. We're on to Sidhu. Sidhu, are you ready? Yes. All right, here's your question. A popular dish at festivals, parties, and gatherings. Oiled down is a stew made with various meats, vegetables, coconut milk, and turmeric. It is the national dish of what country? Home to the largest islands in the Grenadines. Uh, sorry, let me repeat that last sentence. It is the national dish of what country? home to the largest island in the Grenadine. Uh, can you repeat the question? All right. A popular dish at festivals, parties, and gatherings, oil down is a stew made with various meats, vegetables, coconut milk, and turmeric. It is the national dish of what country, home to the largest island in the Grenadines? Uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 
I'm sorry, the correct answer was Granada. Uncle Padraig. Yes, I'm ready. All ready. Trinity on deck. Okay. Uh, so, Padraig, here's your question. A hollow pumpkin is used to prepare a kimada, an alcoholic beverage flavored with coffee, sugar, and other ingredients. It originates from what autonomous region on the Iberian Peninsula, home to Cape Finister, the point at which the Romans believed to be the end of the known world? G -g Galicia? My final yeah, answer. Yeah, that's Galicia. correct. That's correct. Good job. All right. Great job, Patrick. On to the next question. This one's for Nico. Nico, you ready? All right, here we go. Huevos motuleños, a dish of fried tortillas topped with various ingredients, is a breakfast food that originated from the Mexican town of Motul. This town is located just north of a protected ring of sea notes near Tikal in which Mexican state? Quintana Roo. That was very close. I'm sorry, the correct answer was Yucatan. Now we're on to Nick. Nick, are you ready? Yep. All right, Trini, you're on deck. All right, so here's your question. Sauce a la Marocaine, a French sauce often prepared using wine and shellfish, is used to flavor firm white-fleshed fish, such as monkfish. It shares its name with the Armorican Massif, a geologic formation separating the Gulf of St. Malo from the Karnak Stones in what French region? Um, Normandy. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Brittany. Another very, very quick answer. What's uh, missed it? All right, here we are on to the last contestant. Ishan, are you ready? Yes. Here we are. Zawash is a spice blend that is often made with black peppercorn, cumin seeds, and coriander seeds. It is used as the base flavor for most of the cuisine, including in the autonomous regions of Galmudug and Jubaland in what African country? So, Somalia. Somalia is correct. Great job. All right. So that finishes a very, very difficult round. Everybody has now answered their prompt. The research, uh, the research time will now begin. Um, you guys will all have 15 minutes to research a dish from your region or country, and um, you may use any resource that you would like. So go ahead.
How much time do we have left? Three minutes. Alrighty guys, one more minute. Get those finishing touches in to your research. And we're gonna get started. All right, guys, that is time. So it's time to finish your research. We're gonna get the slides back up now. Oh, one second. Yeah. So like I, I moved to the like contestant's name, right? Um, yeah, you move to, yeah, you move to the ones with, you know, the numbers on them and the country or region. Yep. All right. So the dishes, um, so up first. We have Dylan. Dylan. All right. Um, um, so um, my country. Um, yeah, no, uh, just a second. Yeah, just a second. Um, so yeah, uh, what is the name of your dish? All right, so um, Mauritius is a country in the Western Indian Ocean off the coast of Africa, and it is a very unique country because of its diverse population, which has multiple culinary influences from around the globe. While the question focused on the Sino-Mauritian cuisine or cuisine from China, I'm going to focus more on Indian cuisine since that's uh, that is the demographic group that makes up the majority of Mauritius' population. So um, my dish is Mauritian fish vindai, which is a type of tuna dish, uh, which is served as an appetizer or a gajak in Mauritian Creole, which uh, reflects the um, which reflects the Indian uh, influence on the French Creole, since Indians were brought over to the islands as indentured laborers by the British after they seized it from the French. Um, so um, fish uh, vandai uh, served as a gajak. Um, it is 
It uh, has many unique spices, such as mustard, chives, etc. And uh, a lot of these spices and condiments, such as mustard, were brought over from France. Um, uh, and also along with garlic, that's another influence brought over from France. And also there is Indian influence, such as methi seeds, curry leaves, etc. So um, this reflects the really unique synthesis of European and Asian cuisine in Mauritius, since it is, um, you know, obviously an island country that relies heavily on seafood for its cuisine. So um, thus, um, uh, so thus this dish is really emblematic of Mauritius's heritage because of the fact that it has mixed French, British, and Indian influences that have affected its language, its culture, and the identity of the Mauritian people today. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your presentation, Dylan. Um, that was wonderful. Um, so we'll be moving now on to our second competitor. Um, which is Anish. So Anish, you had Uruguay. Um, uh, what is, uh, could you tell us the name of, of your dish, please? Okay, so my, I, I got the country of Uruguay. And the and um, before I say the name of my dish, this is fine. Uruguay is basically a mix of two cuisines, Brazilian and Argentinian. And my dish reflects that. My dish is the Uruguayan dessert called Chaja. Chaja was invented by a Uruguayan man in, in the city of Paysandú. It is basically a mix, mix of Portuñol, which is Brazilian, but, or rather Uruguayan Portuguese cuisine, and Argentinian cuisine, because Chaja is basically a mix of meringue, sponge cake, dulce de leche, which is very common in, in Brazilian Portuguese cuisine, and fruits, typically peaches and strawberries. People can add chocolate if they want to, which they do because it tastes oh very good. It has become sort of a semi-industrialized confectionery, has exported to neighboring countries like the namesake Argentina, Argentina and Brazil, and Paraguay, and it can even be found here in the United States. Chaja is very famous in Uruguay and has become one of the most popular dishes because of its sweet taste and sour tanginess due to the caramelized milk or dulce de leche. Fun fact, Paysandú, the city where Chaja was invented, was the site of a famous battle in 1864 where Brazilian forces tried to invade and retake Uruguay. This is one of the main reasons why Uruguay has so many Portuguese influences because Brazil once owned Uruguay and they have, and, and before the 1900s, they really tried to get it back. So in conclusion, Uruguay has one, one, of, the most, one of the most beautiful and interesting cuisines in the world. And I, I think Chaja really reflects that. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your presentation, Anish. That was great. So now we'll be moving on to our third contestant, which is uh, Pranav Krishna. So Pranav Krishna. Um, Hello. Yeah. So uh, with our past two contestants, uh, when I've asked you to just name your dish, just please name only your dish, and then I'll ask you the prompt afterwards, and then you can start your presentation. So yeah. So uh, Pranav Krishna, what is the name of your dish? The name of my dish is the dosa or dose. All right. So now you can explain how your dish is connected to your country or region's religion, history, culture, climate, etc. You may touch on as many topics as you want or only one. You have three minutes to explain starting now. All right. Hello. This is an interesting area for me because I am Tamer. And the dosa is a ubiquitous part of Tamer cuisine and Tamer culture. I'm sorry. Oh, never mind then. The dosa is a common Dravidian cuisine element common in the four Dravidian states of Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Andhra Pradesh. It was originally invented in the city of Udupi in Karnataka, according to legend. Udupi is a famous temple city full of many pilgrimages. However, there are many variants of the dosa Primarily, dosa is made out, uh, made out of rice flour, or mava in Tamar. However, other ingredients such as dal or lentil are, lentils are used. Furthermore, rava dosa is made of semolina, 
And I can go on and on about the different types of dosa, including masala dosa, which is a very common and very delicious from personal experience type of dosa. And uh, the way this connects to my region is that the dosa is eaten everywhere in Tamil Nadu. In Chennai, the capital and largest city of Tamil Nadu, you can find so many dosa shops and dosa stalls, considering I've been there and they're all incredibly amazing. In Coimbatore and Madurai, famous cities in central Tamil Nadu, you can see many dosa stalls and people ubiquitously eat dosa there. In the southern part of Tamil Nadu, near Rameshwaram and Kanyakumari, dosa is also prevalent there. And this reflects the diversity of dosas and the diversity of Tamil culture. There are many types of dosa. There's meat dosa, there's egg dosa, there's cheese dosa, there's rava dosa, there's masala dosa. Masala is potatoes, by the way, and it's incredibly delicious, if I not mentioned it already. All this represents the diversity of the Tamil culture and the Tamil people. My prophet also mentioned Puducherry, which was a French colony until 19, the 1950s. Puducherry also has some naturally French influences, such as croissant and baguettes eaten along with their masala dosa. Tamil Nadu's diverse culture cannot be furthermore exemplified by the diverse types of dosa, and I strongly recommend you all take a bite at your nearest Indian restaurant. Thank you. Thank you, Pranav, Krishna. That was a great presentation. Um, lots of fascinating facts and personal experience. All right, we're on to the next competitor now. Um, and that is Tom. Or Tom, uh, you had um, pork. So uh, what was the name of your dish, Tom? Pastel de nada. All right. Now explain how your dish is connected to your country or region, to religion, history, culture, climate, etc. You may touch on as many topics as you want or only one. You'll have three minutes to explain starting now. Okay, so pastel de nata is a Portuguese egg custard tart. So it has flour, salt, butter, water that will mix in the dough and the custards of has vanilla extract, water, sugar, milk, flour, and eggs mixed together. So it's a combination of the custard and the um, just the flour. And it has cinnamon as a spice. So it was originally created by the Catholic monks in the Hieronymus Monastery in Lisbon, which is near the Tagus River. So this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it was created by the monks because they used the egg whites to starch the clothes. And since they didn't want to waste anything, they would save the eggs like the actual pieces of the egg to create this dessert. So that shows that Portugal is heavily influenced by Catholicism at the time, because at the time it was a Catholic monarchy um, that ruled po Portugal. That was several centuries ago. So the cinnamon was used from uh, countries that Portugal had trading relationships with, like India. For example, Goa was a colony um, which is um, was influenced by Portugal, and today, as an Indian state, it still has a very uh, distinct Portuguese influence. For example, there's a lot of people that practice Catholicism. And, and my second point that I want to illustrate is that Portugal was uh, benefited uniquely to spreading its culture through uh, its trade. So, for example, it had a large coastline on the Atlantic Ocean. So that would allow them to, for example, the first, uh, one of the first uh, Portuguese explorers, Vasco da Gama, uh, he went around the Cape of Good Hope and sailed along the East Africa coast to eventually reach India. And also they explored other seas as well, such as the South China Sea to reach Macau and the Timor Sea to reach uh, East Timor. So, and also, they went along the coastline of East Africa to go to places like Mozambique. So it also shows that their influence also spread throughout these countries because pastel de nada is also eaten in these countries too. And even in countries where they don't really have that much of an influence over today, due to their trading, they still have an influence over the cuisine. For example, this dish is also eaten in Japan because at the time, uh, people, the traders were eating it and the Japanese people were intrigued by it and they also um, incorporated a dish that is similar to that. So the main important things I want to illustrate is Portugal's connection to Christianity. Uh, 
the colonialism and trading, as well as the water sources that allowed them to get there. All right, thank you. That was a great presentation. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna move on to the next competitor now. Next competitor is Malcolm. So, Malcolm? Yes. What was the name of the Revimba Manga Si Patsamena with rice. That sounds fancy. Now, you'll explain your dish and how it is connected to your country or region's religion, history, culture, climate, etc. Again, you may touch on as many topics as you want or only one. You'll have three minutes to explain starting now. So, Revimba Manga Si Patsamena with rice or vari, as it is in Malagasy is a type of stew. It's sweet potato leaves stewed with dried shrimp and spices. So to start, I want to touch on the ingredients because these are really reflective of pre-colonial Madagascar in that, well, first of all, you have the dried shrimp. Um, Madagascar is obviously an island country, um, and a lot of people don't know this, but Madagascar, um, the people of Madagascar are actually ethnically um, Malagasy, which is an Austronesian group. And Austronesians um, are found mainly in like Oceania. So Oceania, obviously, island, continent. Um, so the Austronesians, can, can I restart? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Ravimba manga si patsamena with rice, or bari, is a stew dish consisting mostly of sweet potato leaves with dried shrimp. Um, I want to touch on the ingredients here. So, to start, we have the shrimp. So, since Madagascar is an island country, um, seafood and the like are obviously quite plentiful and popular there especially around the coast, where this dish is commonly found. Um, another thing that shrimp is, that, that, that contributed to the development of shrimp was the fact that the ethnic group that makes up the majority of the population of Madagascar, the Malagasy, are an Austronesian group. And Austronesians are mostly found in Oceania. So the ocean... But sailing all the way from Oceania definitely contributed to a more maritime way of life, which relied heavily on seafood for protein. Um, and that's generally why shrimp is and other seafoods are included in the culture and cuisine of Madagascar. The second main component of the dish, the sweet potato leaves, are the second portion of, Malaga of the culture of Mal Madagascar which is Bantu or Sub-Saharan African generally. So starches are starches that aren't wheat or or um, millet or grain starches are quite common. They are generally the norm in Sub-Saharan Africa. So you have your yams, your cassava, and your sweet potatoes. Um, sweet potatoes in particular are quite common on Madagascar and they became a um, staple. All right, that is time. Uh, oh. Thank you for your presentation. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Uh, you went a little bit over, but you touched on some very good points. So no, no worries there. Um, we'll now be moving on to our next competitor, which is Natish. So Natish, uh, you had Malta. Um, yes. Yeah. Can I begin? Um, so what was your dish called? Uh, incorrect. I am K K I am Q A R E T. Interesting. All right. Now you can explain how your dish is connected to your country or region's religion, history, culture, climate, etc. You may touch on as many topics as you want, or only one. You will have three minutes to explain, starting now. Okay. Thank you. So Malta is a European country that's located in southern Europe. And it's one of the most su southernmost countries in Europe and it has a Mediterranean climate. So, Imkaret is a Maltese pastry 
that originated on Malta's island of Gazo, and that's the country's largest island, where the capital of Valletta is found. And Imkar really shows how Malta and its culture and cuisine are, it's, it's one of a kind, really. It's a fabric of foreign influences. And Imkara is an example of this as, you know, for example, a similar, so Imkara is basically made with a filling, which is normal. the traditional Maltese filling is dates, and it's individually rolled and deep fried, and the pastry can be eaten on its own or eaten with ice cream. And Imkara is an example of how unique Malta is, as a very similar pastry called Makrut is popular in the Mag. Maghreb region of North Africa, which includes Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. And although Malta is a melting pot of regional cuisine, such as British, French, Italian, particularly Sicilian, and um, Arab, it's very, it has a unique identity. For example, even though it's closer to North Africa than to some other notable European countries, such as France, Malta is in fact a Christian country with what with the country's Knights of St. John, uh, um, one of the most prominent figures in the country and around the world. And Malta is a Catholic country and its consumption of pork is widespread. And this is something you won't find in the Maghreb region, which Malta has significant ties to as pork is haram in Islamic culture, meaning it's forbidden to eat. And Imkare was featured in the Cafe Europe event in 2006, and, it re and it's representing Malta as a unique, as although it, it's a very unique melting pot, it's a very unique identity, and it's still one that's going strong. And that's and Malta is also known to adapt many famous European dishes, such as a French stew, Bobeliers, a, uh, it's a seafood stew originating from Marseille, and it adapted it to make its own. And even though this country is very like less well known and is like one of the less well known members of the European Union in Europe, it still has a very unique identity and that identity is still going strong. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nitish. All right. Now we're going to move on to Sidhu. So Sidhu, you have uh, Granada. Um, what was the name of your dish? Um, actually, I, I did more than one dish. Is that okay? All right, that's interesting. All right. Um, so what were the name of your dishes? Um, I'm using nutmeg ice cream, sweet potato pudding, Grenadian fudge, and cocoa balls. All right. And now um, you may explain how your dish is connected to your country or regions, religion, history, culture, climate, etc. You may touch on as many topics as you want or only one. You'll have three minutes to explain starting now. Okay, so the country I am researching is the Caribbean country of Grenada. In the Caribbean, Grenada is the largest producer of nutmeg and even grows 20% of the world's nutmeg. Grenada, also a cashew producing country, has some dishes to eat. One dish is the nutmeg ice cream. Grenada, being one of the world's largest importers of nutmeg, can make this delicacy. Along with nutmeg ice cream, the Grenadian fudge is also made with nutmeg and coconut. Another dish is the sweet potato pudding. Sweet potato pudding has cinnamon in it, and Grenada, being one of the largest producers of cinnamon in the Caribbean, has an opportunity to make this. The last dish is some cocoa bowls. There are cocoa plantations all around Grenada, so the chocolate is good. These are also made with cinnamon. Also, all of the people, all of the people in Grenada, they're mainly Christian. Um, at, they're mostly Protestant, but there are still some Catholics. And because it was ruled by the United Kingdom, it has taken some influence from them. So, like the nutmeg ice cream, which was modernized by Walter Western culture, it has its own tint to it. Since Grenada is a relatively new country, it only got its independence in like the 1970s or the 1980s. Some of its food is less modernized. So now all of the dishes have ingredients that grow very well in the Caribbean, which are like nutmeg, cinnamon, coconut, since there's hot temperatures around there. And Grenada is really close to the equator. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sidhu. That was short and sweet. All right. Um, we'll now move on to um, Patrick. So yeah, Patrick. so um Oh. Yeah, uh, Galicia. So uh, what was the name of your dish? 
The name of my dish was the empanada galega, which galega is Galicia. Nice. All right. So, um, <clears throat> Galicia is an autonomous province, like found in, the, as mentioned, in northwestern Spain. Most of the region features rolling hills, not too high, like 2,000 feet, with like many flowing rivers. But what makes Galicia's culture unique is it's largely influenced by its coasts, because it's in northwestern Spain. It has coasts on both the Bay of Biscay to the north, and of course the Atlantic Ocean to the west, which drives the usage of many of its dishes, including lots of seafood, which I'll talk about later. One specific dish is the empanada galega, which galega translates to Galicia. Empanadas have actually been cooked since the Goths settled the area, like in the seventh century. By the 12th century, like the dishes were being like used everywhere in Galicia and throughout Spain, but mostly specifically Galicia here in cities such as Portico de la Gloria and the um, now modern day capital, which is Santiago de Compostela of the area. So now, of, now, since over 1400 years ago, the food has been ideal for travelers because since, as you may or may not know, empanadas are like covered with flour or corn, which will not allow like it to get dirty or the dirt to get in. Like, um, many regions of Spain have their own empanada, but what makes Galicians unique is that it's filled with the local seafood, such as octopus, cockles, and small scallops. Like all other empanadas, the outside contains flour. On many instances, Galicias contains a mix with, with like special, um, what was it, um, like corn flour, um, which comes from the municipality of Rias Bajas, which is which is the municipality that makes up much of Galicia. Another reason that is unique is that the Galician empanada does not have any sauce, unlike those in the other regions of Spain. And one thing I'll dive into more is the fish is the fish that's stuffed in the empanadas, which is one thing that makes it unique. Um, one is the bonito, which is a type of tuna found fished off the area that is cooked, crumbled, and put into um, the empanada. And the eel of Lugo, as you may know, Lugo is one of the largest cities in Galicia. It, although it's not a coast, the eel of Lugo gets its name. And yeah, some people actually put eels in their empanadas. Um, besides featuring seafood, there's also the a cooked rabbit, which I can't think of the name of right now. But can, the cooked rabbit can also be fun, featuring um, anise, which is like an alcoholic compound that is used to flavor it. Flavor it. And that is my dish. All right. Thank you, Padre, for your presentation. We'll now be moving on to uh, Nico. So, Nico, you had uh, Yucatan. Um, what was the name of your dish? The name of my dish was, dish was Dulce de Papaya. Nice. All right. Now explain how your dish is connected to your country or region's religion, history, culture, climate, etc. You may touch on as many topics as you want or only one. You'll have three minutes to explain starting now. Dulce de papaya is a dish that originates from the Yucatan Peninsula on the Caribbean coast of Mexico. This dish is, consists of the delicious papaya fruit, slowly simmered with water, cinnamon, and vanilla, and is occasionally topped with uh, cubes of a Dutch cheese called adam. The papaya actually originates from Mesoamerica and can, could have been found originally in places such as uh, Central America, Yucatan, and some of the uh, greater Antilles. Uh, the papaya had been used by the uh, original people who lived in Yucatan, the Maya, for many uses while uh, outside of just eating them. It was used for medicinal purposes, uh, specifically for healing skin conditions. Along with this, uh, along with the papaya being origin originally found in this area, another was the vanilla plant, a pod or orchid, which is now one of the most lucrative and most expensive things, uh, food items in the world. This was actually um, mostly exploited by the Aztecs more than the Maya, but it still has its place in traditional Mexican cuisine. Uh, I like this dish a lot because it has a very strong center on traditional elements of the cuisine of the Yucatan Peninsula. However, has amazing influences by Spanish, um, Spanish and actually interestingly Dutch cuisines on to make the dish one of the most tastiest looking I've ever seen. Uh, cinnamon, as you may know, is not originally found on the Mexican uh, in the country of present day Mexico. It's actually it was actually originated from uh, Southeast Asia. Um, during the colonial times, Portugal owned the island of Sri Lanka, 
and actually did trade with the Kingdom of Spain, which is how um, uh, cinnamon actually reached Mexico. Uh, the Spanish traded their silver from Bolivian silver mines for this cinnamon, and that's how the cinnamon craze began in Mexico. The Dutch influence comes from the Dutch uh, sailing and trading routes throughout the Caribbean from their St. Martin and ABC islands in which the uh, Adam cheese eventually made its way to uh, the Caribbean coast of Mexico. Um, this dish um, encapsulates the um, both the original uh, people who lived on in Mexico and still has its place in traditional Mexican society today. All right, fantastic presentation. All right, thank you for Nico. Um, we're going to be moving on now to um, Nick. So Nick, um, you had, I believe, Brittany. Yeah. Yep. So what was the name of your dish? Uh, Keen Yaman, spelled K-O-U-I-G-N hyphen A-M-A-N-N. -N. Nice. All right. So now uh, you can explain how your dish is connected to your country or region, religion, history, culture, climate, etc. You may again, you may touch on as many topics as you want, or only one. You'll have three minutes to explain, starting now. Keen Yaman is a traditional sweet cake of Brittany developed in the 1860s. It's very sugary and buttery. A very specific recipe of 40% dough, 30% butter, and 30% sugar. Now this sounds like a very typical French food, and it is. This is pretty stock standard for what you might find for a French pastry. As being a part of France, that would make a lot of sense. However, the thing that might seem a little different to you is the name, Kinyaman. That is a very Celtic name, and that symbolizes the Breton people. The people of Brittany are not French. They are a Celtic group descending from the people of the Cornwall in England, who migrated in the 300s to 900s to escape the Anglo-Saxon migration. This, the Breton language is quite endangered, or about 200,000 people still speak it, and very few bilingual schools actually teach Breton, but it is still can be found in certain things, again, such as Kinyaman, the name of this dish. Kinyaman is a perfect example of the blend of both Celtic and French cuisines and cultures that you can find in Brittany. Many different uh, combinations of the two started coming together, especially around the mid 1800s. Despite the fact that France was conquered Brittany in 1532, French culture only started to kind of creep in in the mid 1800s, which is about the time when Kinyaman was first created. Uh, Kinyaman, uh, despite being this like amazing, very delicious and sweet French food, um, one of the big things that made it super popular now is actually it's revival back in Britain in 2007 uh, during the Great British Bake Off, a contestant used Keen Yaman, highlighting their French roots and Breton roots and bringing it back to England. That has then expanded this food across the world, especially in places where many Bretons used to live in, such as like Paris and America, France, many of the French or Canada, many of the French outlying colonies, such as like um, Martinique and Guadeloupe simply because Breton, Brittany for a very long time has been a, quite a poor region of France. Many Bretons relocated to different parts of the French Empire or America, and the Quine Yaman has followed with them. It's just a really, it's a really important dish to Breton culture as it shows like this sort of revitalization of Breton culture as it's been slowly declining over the years. It's starting to finally come into a cultural renaissance as people start recognizing themselves not as French, but as Bretons, and Quine Yaman is a very important part of that. Thank you. All right, thank you. And we are on to the uh, final contestant, which is Ishan, who had Somalia. Um, Ishan, what was the name of your dish? Uh, my name's dish was uh, is Ikun. All right, now explain how your dish is connected to your country or re regions, religion, history, culture, climate, etc. You may touch on as many topics as you want or only one. You'll have to explain starting now. Okay, so ikun is a um, sugar cookie that is commonly eaten during um, Eid and um, Eid al Fitr. And um, the reason why I chose this dish to represent uh, Somalia is because it really shows how geography can impact the history of a nation. 
Um, and one prime example of this is the Islamic influence that um, Nikun and um, all, all other uh, foods that are eaten during um, Eid um, have from uh, Islam. So uh, Somalia is a deeply Islamic nation. Um, its legal system is based on Islam, uh, on Sharia Islam, and it's 99% uh, Sunni Islam. Um, and therefore, it's um, unsurprising that this food is um, deeply, um, food as something that's like deeply rooted in culture is also connected with uh, religion. Um, and the reason why this is um, so important in the terms of geography is because um, of Somalia's location um, near the uh, Bab al Mandeb Great, which makes it easily accessible from the Arabian Peninsula, and therefore um, allowed um, people um, coming from Arabia to establish the Adal um, Sultanate, um, and therefore uh, establish Islam roots inside of um, Somalia. And then the second. Secondly, I'd like to talk about the spices that um, are found on Ikun. Um, so Ikun is, um, Ikun spices are not in fact uh, from the Arabian Peninsula. Instead, they are from places like, um, for example, um, Indonesia, right? Uh, where you can find uh, cinnamon and egg, for example. And these spices um, originated long before colonialism and globalization. And this is because Somalia was an integral part of the Indian Ocean uh, trade network. Um, and because of that, um, um, and the reason why it was such an integral um, piece of this trade network is because of the Somali current, right? And the Somali current reverses um, and, uh, towards India, um, thus facilitating um, trade networks. Um, the reversing Somali current actually All right. So that is time. We sorry we had to cut you a bit short. But again, you touched on a lot of very good points. So um yeah, thank you for that. All right. And that was our last competitor. Um so we can move on to the last slide now. Well done to everybody for such a fantastic job on their research. Um, tomorrow, uh, the results of the top 10 will be released, but unfortunately, we will have to say goodbye to four contestants. Fantastic job to all of you for making it this far already in the competition. And regardless of how you do, I hope you had, that you had a great time learning about the world in this summer's GeoLeap tournament. Have a good evening, everybody. Wait, when are we taking the test?